I think I may have found your newest weekend binge. They Clone Tyrone is quirky, mysterious, funny, and odd. So are you going to be watching? A series of eerie events thrusts an unlikely trio onto the trail of a nefarious and mysterious government conspiracy. So we've got three standout stars in this. John Boyega, Tiana Paris, and Jamie Foxx. The aesthetics of the film are one of the standouts. This takes place in an economically depressed area where the characters wear clothing and drive cars that feel a bit time out of space. There's a 70s or 80s feel to the set designs, but the technology is current, at least in parts. And then plus with the actual film quality, it looks like this was shot on film as there's a good deal of grain, giving it an older feel to it. And then the color palettes, they're muted. And then the cinematography, it's just personal and intimate. There's so many creatively captured angles that work to keep us right in the middle of conversations so that we can feel the strong emotions that our characters are experiencing. And also, the camera likes to showcase slow sweeping shots at times, taking its time as it just pans across a location. And this is enveloping and awesome, especially because so many movies today, you know, are just all about the quick cuts, never staying on a scene for more than a second or maybe two before jumping to a new angle. And I'm not saying that that doesn't happen in this, but there are also a lot of sequences where the camera really does take its time. Now, for probably the first 15 minutes or so of the story, I didn't really have an idea of what was going on or what direction the story was going to take. We meet John Boyega's character of Fontaine, and he's a tough, no-nonsense figure. He's a bit brutal, and maybe even ruthless at times, but he also has some charisma that really begins to grow some endearment. Jamie Foxx plays a flamboyant pimp named Slick Charles, and he steals his scenes. It's just quick-witted line delivery. It's both snarky and relevant to the conversation. And his dynamic with both Boyega and Paris, it's dysfunctional, but also silly in a way that makes him a character that I keep wanting to watch without being such an idiot that he's annoying. Tiana Paris plays Yo-Yo, and she is definitely an intelligent and wise character within the story. She's observant and also has a realistic outlook on her surroundings. So if she does get mixed up in something wonky, she's aware and then she's ready to act. Now, the humor, it's sometimes sideways, not exactly what you might expect, but the writing is incredibly quick and very smartly written. While the characters banter back and forth in rapid succession, so much is being conveyed, creating a lot of context for the social commentary that's contained within the story. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you know that I really do enjoy a great social commentary, if it's poignant and relevant. In this one, it's biting and awesomely crafted. Portions could come across somewhat preachy, but more so, the narrative thrives when diving into stereotypes and then using those to address and attack the attitudes. And the message is actually quite scary and disturbing because it's talking to a lot of the current mindsets and behaviors that we see playing out in today's world. I mean, it's creepy and unsettling, and then also very disgusting, but it's holding up a mirror to society so that we can see the horrors. And I love that while some of the messaging is overt, so it can't be missed, there are other moments where it's being subtly reinforced, usually through the lyrics of a song or even an image on a wall, something that's not going to necessarily stand out in an obvious way, but it's still present and impactful. But this also, it's not just a social commentary. It's a mystery, sci-fi, and then an action drama that is wildly captivating and deep. Now, something shocking happens to Fontaine, and then we're on this journey with him as he works through what he believes happened and then the ramifications that follow from that. As set up, it provides some humorous sequences as well as moments that are really going to make you go, huh? Now, I loved following our characters as they slowly begin to unravel the plot, taking them to new and surprising areas that provide opportunities for them to go into superhero or even secret agent mode, which then leads to some unexpected consequences. And there were more than a couple of times that I laughed out loud because the events were so abruptly funny. The story also, it does a good job of leading us through the mystery without totally spoon feeding it to us. And I think a few times the arcs become predictable, but I was intrigued and invested, so I didn't mind a few moments of obviousness. But with that, there were also story elements that maintained obscurity, so certain portions could really genuinely be surprises. Now, I was totally digging the atmosphere of this production. There are foggy nights that add a small sense of eeriness and then also work to just build up the suspense of the plot. There's also a somewhat dystopian outlook on a lot of this. It's seemingly hopeless, but also it has some twinges of optimism. Now, each scene, it's continually moving the narrative forward, so it doesn't ever feel like our time is being wasted or that the story is meandering or even getting lost. Storytelling is efficient with a relaxed pace that's always progressing. Now, it is just over two hours long, and I was surprised that I didn't feel the time. 
I mean, there are quieter moments that allow some of the tension to build as well as just having the intrigue grow, but these are then balanced really well with faster moving scenes of action or dialogue. Now I mentioned the aesthetics a little bit and just about every aspect of the movie is complemented by visuals and sounds. The soundtrack and the score, they are wonderful. It's a mix of funk, R&B, and even some hip hop. And it all helps to give this groove to the story that matches our characters and their attitudes. Now Slick Charles is a bit on the agitated or even hyper side. So some of the music is more quickly paced to match his momentum. And Fontaine is more laid back and still with an intensity though. So there are segments of the score that have a mellow but driving beat to them. And then watching John Boyega in a role like this, it really makes me want to revisit Attack the Block. I mean, he has such a powerful presence in this. He's got a fierce emotion in his eyes and his expressions, but he also is mostly quiet in his speech. He didn't say a ton, but he measures his words and then says exactly what's needed. And he's also a great balance between Paris and Fox. He's reserved in his speech and movements while they're more excitable and demonstrative. Now, he also has a couple of moments that showcase the softness and humanity. I mean, his hardened persona is shed to just show vulnerability that I found touching and awesomely delivered. Now, I actually rewatched this a second time before doing my review because I had portions of the story just stuck in my head and I wanted to revisit them. I was blown away by the story, enthralled by the dialogue, the cinematography, and the message. The conclusion of the story, it has some melancholy to it, but that doesn't take away from the power of the narrative and the point that the movie is making. This is haunting in a wonderful way, and it certainly has a lot of rewatchability to it. Overall, They Clone Tyrone is a captivatingly fun movie that mixes the sci-fi, mystery, and action genres to craft a story with relevance and significance, and also a scathing social commentary. With a dystopian outlook and gritty visuals, the pacing is driving and creates a world that is so close to true that it's terrifying. The three leads share an incredible dynamic that create laughs along with the drama. And while the arcs can be a little predictable at times, the narrative and aesthetics work together to create a fantastic and enveloping film. There is a tiny bit of sex, maybe some brief nudity, a ton of profanity, and then a bunch of violence. I give They Clone Tyrone four and a half out of five couches. So what's something you're looking forward to seeing in the coming weeks or maybe even months? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.